Thanks for being here. My name is Carol Chen, and uh, while well, Simon's talk was a hard act to follow, but um, thanks for um, being here and listening to my talk. Yay. <laughs> uh, thanks to Johan and Henrik and all the organizers, as well as the sponsors, for making this event happen. It's been a while since we met in person, and I'm really excited. Alright, um, just a bit about me, and um, every time I come to this slide, I actually end up spending more time than I should try to think of what to put on it. Um, being alive for almost half a century now, it's like, partly because, well, there's a lot to talk about in my life, I guess. And uh, although the real reason is, um, I probably forgot most of it, so it's hard to, to know uh, what to share. But in general, the long and short of it is I've worked for more than 20 years in, uh, in tech and uh, more than 10 years um, in this uh, community management role. And uh, when we talk about community management, I talk about open source communities. So I've been with Red Hat since 2016. Uh, have uh, worked with several different projects and currently with Ansible uh, for the last four and a half years or so. Um, so um, previously before I got to community management I was doing like um, some from software testing to software development to uh, integration and in a way I'm still in software because it's really about the software community right and um, open source software to be specific. So, um, besides that, being part of the Nordic countries, I live in Finland uh, since 2007, so it's been a while. And uh, I've been really honored to be uh, attending Force North since 2017. And uh, just kind of, uh, uh, I guess, a fun fact I, I, do, I play in an amateur orchestra, but I know the Gothenburg Symphony Orchestra's current chief conductor. Uh, Sam Dumadias Rovali is actually a Finnish, and he, I think he's currently still the chief conductor of the Dobre uh, Philharmonic, which is um, the city where I live, so just like the connection there. Um, and uh, if you want to uh, get in touch with me, uh, there's my matrix handles and, and uh, IDs and Mastodon uh, link. Uh, the matrix, what, what is like my personal one that I've been used, uh, using for uh, five years now, maybe, and the one, if you have more uh, and specific, specific topics, you can ping me at SciBat uh, at SBOIM. All right. Uh, speaking of false North, <laughs> sorry, I just had to share that um, it's been, my, my first time here was 2017, like I mentioned, and I was talking about Manage IQ, the previous project that um, I was supporting. Um, and following that, uh, I gave a, a kind of a shorter talk about community management, uh, kind of related to how it is like conducting an orchestra. So, and in 2020, um, we had a bunch of virtual virtual events, right? So uh, this was actually a screenshot from the recording of my talk. And only after the talk I did I realize that um, I forgot to turn on, on, on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, uh, I, I remember it was a Johan or somebody asking me, is, is that what you want? I'm like, yeah, 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 no worries. Because I, I see my own face on, on the screen, you know, on my screen, but the, the, the software toggle was off. So there you go, my, my, my uh, <laughs> moment of fame there. But I'm so happy that on the fourth time's a charm for me, I'm actually on the big stage this time. Hi mom, I made it! Yay! <laughs> so thanks, uh, and, and um, you know, it's, it's really uh, such an honor to be here. But now let's get back to the main topic of my talk. So, um, just uh, curious, because I don't want to make any assumptions about, you know, people joining this talk. Uh, and, and some audience participation. Who has heard about Ansible, the project? Oh, that's always a good, good, um, good view to see. Oh, my work is here, here it's done, let's go. <laughs> but um, really, uh, Ansible is a, quite a popular project, so um, not too surprising that people have heard about it. 
Uh, how about people, anybody has been, has used Ansible before, written a playbook, converted some shell scripts to, to Ansible playbooks? Good, all right, not, not as many, um, obviously, but um, a handful. What about, have any, has anyone like written a module, a plugin, or contributed to an Ansible collection? Something along that lines. All right, thank you. <laughs> Even fewer, but uh, it's okay like, when we say like uh, about the Ansible community, is, is the group of users, contributors, people who are interested, is, um, you know, there's, there's no um, membership requirements. I myself is actually in the first quadrant. I, you know, I've, I've gotten started with Ansible, I know what it's about, I've taken a course, um, but because I focus more on the other side of community management than the engineering part, I'm actually, at least many of you are probably a few steps ahead of me in terms of the using and contributions to Ansible. So, um, I wanted to highlight this uh, docs page because this is something we did recently. Uh, we've had uh, good feedback about Ansible documentation from many people saying that, um, you know, like once we find the content, it, the, the content is really good and you know, the, the quality, but sometimes the problem is not that, that the quality of the content, but finding it in the first place. So, so we, we recently uh, revamped the, leading, uh, the landing page of the doc site, documentation site, to provide these uh, user journeys for the different personas in the community. Many people are just starting out, wanting to learn about Ansible. The previous website was not very clear about what, how do you go about finding the information you need. So with the new um, kind of organization, okay, if you're getting started, it's quite clear where you wanna go. If you already know what you're doing and you want to start developing stuff, or even if you are a maintainer of a collection, there are, there are like um, places you can paths you can go directly to. So uh, this effort is is led by my teammate Don Naro, who um, I, I hope I was hoping he was here today, but um, um, hopefully we we can see some of his talks at other events. But he he really helped bring this personas and user, user journeys to. Um, our documentation and later on for our website, which I'll talk about in, mo uh, in a moment. And I think this really helps to improve the navigation and the, the kind of onboarding for community members, whether you're a first-timer or uh, you're a seasoned contributor. So we've also put this new website up um, for a while and there's even a toggle for people to um, revert back to the old website if, if they did like new layout and I can't remember it was 1% or something, it's like less than 1% actually reverted back so I think the new website's working, we get thousands of hits per day so um, it's, it's not just a sam small sample but um, people seem to be um, use, using and appreciating the new, new journeys. All right, so when we talk about users and contributors, um, and we focus on the contributor uh, persona, here's a look at uh, when we talk about you know, open source projects, a lot of, many, many open source projects are, maybe have some corporate sponsors, in this case, Red Hat. Um, but uh, I, I didn't want, the, just now when the colors went red, it's like, no, I don't want that to happen because we're talking about the upstream here. We, we wanted to use the um, community colors. So here's a look at the, the it's across 376 repos uh, for different Ansible, different parts of Ansible. And um, we are counting pull requests and review comments in the last three years in GitHub. And you can see that even though there's a lot of red, red parts that uh, shows uh, those are uh, committed by uh, Red Hatters, by, by uh, staff, but there are also big areas where uh, the community, the non-staff, the non-Red non, um, the, the, yeah, non Hatters and, and fully community contributions are quite prominent. The percentage is about 
57% uh, staff. Um, th there's another graph which I didn't uh, use, which actually shows if we include number of issues, the, 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 the percentage goes up for communities, like 44% staff versus 56 community. But of course, issues, quality of issues is hard to gauge sometimes, you know, anybody can open issues, so, so it may not be the best um, metrics to use, so we excluded them, but still this, this number of indexed PRs and review comments is more than 50,000. So there's a lot of activity in our project, um, and, you know, uh, a good healthy percentage of staff is a small staff. So everything looks great, right? Um, like uh, in the previous slide, the, when we talked about staff, that there was 184 staff members contributing to 50, 50 something percent of the PRs, and for more than 4,000 non-staff, because you know some some people may maybe do a drive-by contribution or some are more involved. Um, but you know, I think our community is growing, but in a way, we're also growing apart. So my colleague, Greg Sutcliffe, did a really good talk in, during Pacific Management Camp in February, where he talked about the state of our community, uh, the past, the present, and what we want to do for this year, for the future. Um, if you're interested, you can see the recording, and also he wrote a really good, great blog post detailing um, the uh, thoughts and processes behind it. But the long and short of it, again, TLDR, is we are a big project that's growing, but growing apart. There's a lot of fragmentation, and um, is, we have at least 20 different projects. Um, if you look at the e ecosystem page, docs.ansible.com slash ecosystem, you can see a bunch of projects from besides the Ansible core and the collections, which I think many people are familiar with. There's AWX. There's Ansible Lint, Ansible Galaxy, Ansible Builder, and so on and so forth. So it's difficult, sometimes even for us who are involved in the project, to keep track of everything. The ecosystem page is also relatively new this year. What's more that we need like to be also following um, all these different changes, what's happening in each individual project, and so on and so forth. So. It's really, um, we need to find a way to kind of reduce that confusion and that fragmentation. So, I don't know if you noticed, but um, there is actually no single website for the Ansible community currently, which is, for a project our size, is actually quite unusual. So, um, if some of you might know the history of Ansible, uh, it was a a uh, company that was acquired by Red Hat, 2015, I think. And um, instead of, a lot of Red Hat products have different upstream and uh, product names. For example, um, most people are probably familiar with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The upstream is Fedora. For Ansible, Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform is the product, but the upstream is Ansible. So, you know, it's, when you talk about Ansible, it's a very overloaded word, and sometimes it's hard to um, uh, know exactly what you're talking about, where to find the information you need. You go to Ansible.com currently, it's really about the product, it's not about the community. We do have one page, Ansible.com slash community currently, that's the only kind of um, presence we have. And then the rest we have to point to GitHub, to wikis, to HackMDs, to uh, different discussion boards and forums, to documentation website, and so on. So I think um, there's a whole discussion behind Greg's blog post that we need this community presence. And I think um, this, this, is, this is something that will help not just bring the community together, but for for also newcomers who want to learn about Espo, who want to join the community, to have an easier way to find the stuff they need. And also, for discussions, um, many people uh, 
prefer mailing lists. We have used mailing lists for a long time, but we actually saw the, the decline of the usage since 2015. For, for, for some reason, it started um, less and less people use mailing lists. We, we nowadays use it for some announcement, but not as much discussion. The, the, the discussions happen in uh, GitHub discussions, in chat, in various like uh, random places, some in Reddit and you know Stack Overflow and whatnot. So there's no one central again uh, uh, like a one, one central place you can point to and say, hey, you should be able to find most of your answers here, or you know like uh, find people to, to discuss with. So the, the place for discussion is again something that we wanted to have. <laughs> so those are kind of the the plans that we have for this year already starting in January, February. Talking about websites, already last year, uh, giving a talk in the virtual Faustin edition, virtual edition, um, I already mentioned that it, we've talked about needing a website for a long time. So um, it's about communication, about, about uh, less fragmentation. But not as much progress has, has been made uh, in that front. Although I would say, you know, at, at least I have my video up, so that, that's progress in, in that sense. But uh, <laughs> the actual progress is happening this year for the website. Um, it is very much a work in progress, but from the very start, we say, please, um, we want the community involved, we want to hear from you, we want to, even if you're not using ASPO, but perhaps, you want to learn about it, like when you go, go to a website, what, you, what are you expecting to see? So um, if you go to the github.com slash community slash community website repo, you can open issues, you can comment on the, the progress that's being made. There's a working group that anybody is uh, welcome to join. It's our matrix. Um, I believe it's bridged to RRC for those who might still be using RRC. We usually just have um, the channel Ansible dash channel name. In this case, the Ansible dash website on Libera chat. So uh, we use Nicola as the study site generator. This is again after discussing with the community. And I think uh, just now Simon mentioned that the more we agree, the, the more we disagree about less. It's quite true in some of these cases when we had discussions with the community, sometimes we find little things that we think we disagree with and we argue about that. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because when we hear from the community, we sometimes notice things that we may not have considered and um, we, we can you know, like incorporate them, get the suggestions and whatnot. And, um, Really, everyone is uh, welcome to participate. We, in our team, we have a, a kind of a mode, um, mode of operation. We say we, we, we are, it's okay to disappoint, but it's not okay to surprise. So what that means that is that we want to be as open as possible about what we're doing and um, communicate that as much as possible and hear from you and uh, the community. We may not always agree on the things or we may finally make a decision that is you know the, the majority decides, but it doesn't please everyone. But still, uh, is 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 done. The, the decision and the discussions are done in the open. So we don't. We may disappoint some people, but we don't want to hide things. You know, uh, discuss behind closed doors and then surprise everyone with a decision that we made. So um, we try to involve the community every, every step of the way. Similarly, for the discussion board, um, how many of you have used Discourse as a forum or a community board? Yeah, uh, about half. I myself really like it. Um, I've, I've been involved in a few communities that use that. I think um, in terms of uh, managing mailing lists, the forum is a more cohesive way to go. And uh, you can use this course as in a mailing list format if you want to. You can subscribe to certain categories and whatnot. But um, so, so this is what another thing that we've again discussed with the community and 
come to a, a consensus that we want to proceed with using this. Um, currently, we're running an internal test uh, forum to just make sure that this is what we need. We have, you know, um, which which modules we need to, to which plugins we need to install, and we're in discussion with uh, CDCK about hosting it as well. So we hope to be able to say, hey, welcome to forum.expo.com or whatever URL we end up with, and um, as a starting point to join the community. Hey, how are we doing on time? Ooh. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll just run through a bit because I think we are we're running late on time. Um, with, with Expo community growing, even though we have some um, growing pains, there, there, there are ways that uh, we have uh, involved the community to help uh, improve things. Um, and as, and as in-person events are coming back, um, we are hosting also more um, act, uh, activities and events. One of these is Expo Community Days, which have, we've already started one in India early this year. Uh, organized by one of my colleagues, uh, Amwesha, who unfortunately can't be here today. She's actually based in Stockholm, but she, she's sick today and, and, and this weekend she can't be here. But anyway, so we have some activities happening. If you want to know more, um, we have an Expo booth at, at the event. Come talk to me, come find me, and we can talk about that. I'm wondering if we can do a, like an Expo Community Day in Nordics, or at least in Europe since the next one is actually in Boston as part of Red Hat Summit. So um, let's make more things happen here in the region. Similarly for Contributor Summit, which is more contributor focused as the title suggests. Um, so we had uh, one this year, early this year, as part of Config Management Camp. And uh, um, the, the kind of backstory about this is in 2020, we were supposed to have the Contributor Summit as part of Forsterworth, and uh, it didn't happen. Um, that was like one of the first European ones we wanted to have because it has always been tied with Ansible Fest previously, which is usually uh, in, in the US. So, but you know, again, we hope to have more events here, and um, if you're interested in knowing more or participating, uh, please come talk to me. And meetups, another thing that's Slightly different. While we want to have uh, some like larger conferences to cater to the community and uh, contributors, user groups, meetups are generally smaller, more you know like uh, location focused events. Like maybe one in Gothenburg, one in Stockholm, a few a couple in Finland. Um, and also another main difference is a lot of these meetups are organized by community, not by us in, in Red Hat or the, the uh, community team in Red Hat, but I show that non-Red Hatters and community members. So uh, again, as, as events are coming back in person, you can see that the uh, number of events, the is online event is false, is the, the red ones are going up, the blue ones are coming down, it's actually the, those virtual events in the past few years, Uh, some virtual events in India, it was the same virtual event like posted to like nine different groups in India. So, um, by the way, if you want more information, again, talk to me. There's no uh, meetup group in Gothenburg yet. So, if anybody's interested in organizing one, um, uh, please get in touch. Um, finally, we're working on the meetup organizer toolkit that helps people to get started. And I think this is something that's not used, not just for organizing Expo meetups, but any meetups in general. Hopefully, people can find use, um, usefulness out of it. We will be putting it on the new website that's upcoming and um, be, make it accessible to all. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, for people who might be interested, there's um, the new part of Expo called Event Driven Expo. It's, pretty kind of hot topic right now, a lot of discussions around it. Um, so from playbooks, you can write rule books to, you know, um, handle sources of different 
the trigger the events that uh, you apply some rules to and uh, the actions to troubleshoot stuff um, and and you know capture this operational knowledge in the uh, new Ansible rulebooks. And again, you, um, there's, there's more details in the Stockholm meetup next week in, on May 3rd, if you're interested. Finally, there's a newsletter that um, you can subscribe to uh, for, for news about Ansible community and uh, the debug. Uh, at some point with an RSS feed for people to subscribe to. So, um, totally running out of time. So, thank you. Please come to me with questions you might have about Ansible community or communities in general. A lot of the, these things I'm sure is not unique to, to our community, the challenges that we face. So, um, it, sharing our knowledge with each other and um, help you make automation life and make things easier for you. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Carol, uh, and thank you for keeping time even though it's very late. Perhaps we have the time for one short question uh, from the audience. Please, yes, thank you. Do we have in the meanwhile any questions? Yeah, I do have one question. So you, you said there is currently fragmentation to lots of forums and that maybe discourse will fix them, but is there also thoughts about how to actually pull in the people because this fragmentation is also happening in other communities. It, it seems a very natural thing to do just discuss in the forums right. that are already on, so is there a plan to, to proactively pull in the people to the new platform to, yeah. uh, to Kickstarter? So we, we do have, um, like for example, on Reddit, on the different discussion boards, tension is happening, we, we do have, uh, we do track those and follow those, so we hope to be able to uh, convince these people, we, we're not, of course not going to have 100% migration, but you know, like when we provide this forum to show that this is a place, a, a better place for the discussions, because not only can you reach, you know, when other people see the same discussion, they can jump in more easily than when you try to go from GitHub to Reddit, for example. So, you know, it's a step by step process, but I'm going to expect 100% everybody comes to the new forum on day one, but we, we do hope to, and we do plan to get attract people in the in the long in the long run. Thanks for the question. And feel free to talk to me at the Expo booth. Thank you. Thank you so much.